What? It's got a logo on it. Hey, welcome back to Business Repair Shop. So yeah, just doing some buttoning up on this thing while I'm waiting on parts. So you guys remember I got that other car off another 60. And yeah, that's not gonna come free. So I ordered a kit. I think it's Mike's carburetor. I'll put a link in the description. I'm pretty excited about that. It's a pretty good price, and it looks like that's got the new throttle shaft, which is all I really need for this for the other one. But because the other one's actually all rebuilt. So I'm gonna pull this, I'll just take the throttle shaft kit out of it, save the rest for later. Um, but maybe we will do a video on tearing this thing apart if I can ever get to break loose. This is the one that used to be on our old our old 60 that's out at the farm. So I'm trying to clean it up, but it's not doing it. Developing things. Apparently, the this definitely this the super is definitely gonna need a new fuel bowl because the fuel bowl if you close it it leaks so i just left it open and closed the main jet to got that just the main jet you can close that well then i'm getting obviously something's still leaking fuel there so well so tonight what i've been doing sunday night is getting it got the, got the toolbox back in this side tin back on what i like is this side tin's actually gonna line up pretty nice the other side i haven't close i gotta figure something out there and i don't know if it's the this has got to get when this actually gets sucked down that's what i bet it is but when it gets sucked down with the bolts just like i put those on but i thought i'd at least get the side tin on make it a little bit nicer looking you know the project you'll see is trying to get that exhaust pipe off because it's pretty well clamped on there might just get a new one so yeah but yeah everything else is good the other thing i gotta do still is put a kill switch on it um i think i'm gonna run it off the ground because I'll put that in my head i want to replace this anyway because it's a pretty chintzy little cable for a six volt system so and then i think what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna run it off here and then instead of it going to that side of the bell housing it'll come over here i'll run it to one of the bolts over on this side probably that bolt and run the the red kill switch right here then all you have to do is lift this lift this side tin piece up when you're shutting your fuel off here you can just right there and turn a little short cable over so i still got to get all that stuff but uh good news looks like i said i scored a set of tires for the 60 or the 170 you haven't seen any videos of it i'll play a video of it right here of it running uh, <laughs> You'll see in that video that I'm being the uh, carb or the choke for it because here's the actual carburetor off that engine, or off that tractor. So, I've got a rebuild kit for that. You'll see this video hopefully come out maybe next week. I'll go through this, take it to work, put it through our ultrasonic cleaner, clean it all up, paint it, get it ready to go back on next spring. Because right now this choke this is a problem here. It works, but it's got like the spring's not attached, so it's just kind of springs around free so we shall take care of that but yeah all right so even though i put this on already i realized i gotta take it back off i think 
because I still gotta tighten down this fuel tank. But I'm happy with where it's at, so I'm just gonna tighten down where it goes. So let me get the stuff to do that. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. So the uh, non-square bolt into the front one. And then the square ones, which are still probably original. I'm guessing. Went on the back. If I can get started, maybe. Maybe. Oh, he's learning. He's learning. I I dropped you again. Luckily it wasn't those new tripods, they're not in yet. So I'll go back to the single-handed view here. But yeah, I'll check out those. Uh, got those at an auction a couple years ago. I think I paid five dollars for that one and seven dollars for that one. So that's a good deal. It's one of those deals, you know. Um, I'm sure most of you out there that are big into auctions have done. Um, my wife was showing up to the auction right about the time that those things had come up. So she walks up and I'm bidding on something. And you know, you guys all know, I mean, I have too many tractors for, for a kid that lives in town. And so she walks up and she just sees me bidding. She immediately is like, what are you buying? Expecting that I was buying a tractor. I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. It's a, it's a $7 girl. So she was of course okay with that. And it was fine. I mean, she would've been okay if it was a good deal on a tractor. You can't say no to a good deal. Yeah, it was just kind of funny. She always talks about that. Yeah, that's why I can't leave you alone at an auction. Another funny auction story. We're all doing story time here. So there's a kid. Okay, kid, what am I saying? He's probably he's about my age. I'm 30. I'll turn 32. Um, there's a guy in town that legitimately looks just like him. I mean, he might not be quite the full-size bibster, but he's pretty darn close. Beard and everything. And over the years, I got two stories about this guy. Over the years, there's been multiple times, he, he's, I believe he actually went to school with my brother-in-law. Um, not the one that I've talked about before, the one that, on my wife's side, um, who lives out in Sioux City and is a cop. And I think he went out to school with him. But, uh, so he's about my age, so we're at an auction this one time, it's, uh, Chuck Lindsay Auction. Does it, uh, consignment auctions around here. I used to do them at a lot up at, uh, when I used to work at Stoker Trucking. Um... Did we do a lot up there, a lot of consignments, auctions, up at the bar there for Kingpins. And a couple years, I was helping him out during that. We were kind of slow at work, and I, I, you know, I took the opportunity. It was a fun time. Got to be around some equipment. It's actually how I ended up with this tractor. It was at a Chuck Lindsay auction. Anyway, back to story time. That one was already tight. I never actually loosened that one up. So there's this guy, and I've seen, like I said, we've seen him around a few times, and every time we see each other. If it's out on the town, or if it's, I think I've seen it at a Mallers game with the time was the Mallers, was the amateur or the semi-pro hockey team down in the Quad Cities. Every time I've seen him, we've always made eye contact with each other. It's almost like that, hey, we look kind of like each other look, you know? Well, um, I better, better love it fit better on there. So the one day we're at this auction and me and my buddy, Matt, we haven't seen yet. Matt, uh, Matt and his, uh, his wife just had their first kid the other day. I've digressed. Anyway, so me and my buddy, Matt are standing there and I see there's this kid that looks just like my doppelganger. And so yeah, it's a big ox, a lot of people at it. He was kind of wearing a shirt like I even wore. It was like an orange flannel. And I watched my dad. I saw, I'd see my dad had pulled in with his truck. And I saw him kind of walking around trying to kind of find me. And we were standing there by, I think, a, one of the tractors. And I saw him start to walk up to this guy. And I looked at my buddy Matt and I said, Matt, watch this. My dad's going to walk up to this guy and he thinks it's me. So he walks up to him and he kind of gets next to him on the hay rack. <laughs> kind of looks over and realizes once you get close, yeah, we're not the same guy. <laughs> at this look and me and Matt start laughing and then he kind of looks up sees us laughing and of course he you know realizes uh nope nope that's not Kyle <laughs> so we always laugh about that then same kid uh my mom was out riding her bike one day on a bike path and I forgot the whole story 
what exactly happened, but I'm pretty sure, I can't remember if she saw it, she dumped the bike or something, something happened and this kid had stopped and she for a second thought it was me, but it was this kid, it was the same kid and I thought, mom, it's happened to both of you now. <laughs> so I always thought that's kind of a funny, always a funny story. Like I said, and one of those, I've literally never talked to him. I've, every time we see each other, we have that look like, man, we're twins. Like, we had the same milkman back in the day. Can't be because we're out in Seattle. That's a joke, kids. That's a joke. But yeah, so that's kind of my doppelganger story. I can't remember why I even got onto that story. Hmm. Also about auctions. Probably, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, so we're getting this all tightened up. Let me uh, put that on my head. This tighten up. We'll get this tightened up and bring you back. All right. I'm going to change out this uh, uh, amp meter because it's just a stock one. Figured right now would be the perfect time to do that while I'm waiting on carb parts to come in. I like these old ones better anyway because they actually, uh, the new one bolts up differently. It doesn't bolt up. It doesn't have these wires directly on the same thing that's a stud. It holds the gauge in. It's a little different setup. So, hopefully, we'll get this changed out. I need to do my water temp too, but I'm not sure. I might not do that this fall because I'm pretty sure this one works to start with. And for the time being, it's going to be okay. Okay. Those can kind of just chill out there. See how this one, they must have some kind of like a rubber grommet or something that makes sure that doesn't actually short out. Let's get the other side off. Quick. Be careful on this one because this is. Get that off there. I'll bring you back once we get the new one ready to go on. The reason why I really like this one is this one uses like these plastic grommets, so it's basically studs were all together versus this one. It has separate studs versus the mounting. I like that a lot better. So what I bought this, the guy I bought it from threw that in. The carbon, a bunch of stuff, shift boot. So I haven't put that on yet either, but we'll uh, get this thrown on there quick and we'll go from there. Over from the takeoff, so this wire is going to have to kind of get. Ooh, take that off for a second. All right, let's take that. Let's hope we'll be able to kind of wait to mount that up. But it looks like I need to do that right now. So I'll get this in here. Started watching this uh, as I've been getting more into filming and putting more videos up. Obviously, I've been watching more. My suggested. Started watching this channel. I'm probably gonna hack the name of it up. I think it's like Dirt Steel and Gears. I'll throw a link in the description. Check it out. Um, a lot of farming videos. A lot of stuff about working, but it's got a shop cat. And as you guys actually that actually know me my my cat paul well he used to come out to the lawn many many years ago he used to come out and hang out in the our old it was five of us guys living in a house we called the party house and uh, he used to 
might wander out there and follow me out, but he never really tried to come out to this garage. But I've also, he hates the outdoors, so. But that guy's got a cat, and he always jokes around about, Wilson, I need your paw. I think that's funny, because I feel like if I, had, if I had Paul out here, I would be saying similar things. And I feel like Paul would have about the same response as, as Wilson seems to. But yeah, check out that, that channel. There's a few other ones I'll talk about. Obviously, if you're stumbling upon my channel, none of the channels I'm probably going to even hint at or like talk about at all, the ones you've already probably heard of and enjoy. But maybe for some reason you haven't. And it'll give you something else to hang out and watch. That's what I, I, that's, I, mean, I sure enjoy watching. I mean, I'm not a farmer. Like I said, you checked out the link. So what I, I build uh, high performance small engines. So we build, work at Midwest Super Cub. We build, and the link that you've been seeing down there is for Midwest Horsepower, actually. That's what I'm saying. Well, so we build, uh, hang on. <laughs> we built high performance small engines, started off with building like uh, long tractor pullers. And now we're building our new division, Midwest Horsepower building big block vanguards check out I'll, I'll throw a link up to the youtube page that i film a bunch of stuff for it's kind of like this but a little more serious because it's, it's work or it's you know actually it's not just a guy screwing around his garage but it's some it's fun you might enjoy some stuff we do some cool testing out in that in our uh, boat division i'll call it so yeah, I'll get uh, get that on. It's kind of kitty wampus now. I might move how that's adjusted, but for now that'll work. Get the other side of this on here quick, and we'll get the thrown back on. But yeah, check out those two. Uh, I said Midwest Horsepower. I'll throw the link up. The link's usually in the description, but uh, I'll throw the link to our YouTube channel. Check that out. We just. Uh, working on a drive right now with a uh, mud walker out of florida kind of a collaboration partnership that we've been working with uh, mike down there to build a drive that can handle our because we have we have we have a briggs and stratton engine that starts off with a 25 horse and it ends up as um a lot <laughs> ends up as a uh, um 120 so Kind of wild, wild, wild stuff. All right, let's get all this back on. The only thing I don't like about that is how I had all these. I had all these wires. I really should have done this when I had all these wires off when I was rewiring the tractor. I didn't film that part, but got that kit from Corbs to rewire it. I should have done this then because now all these wires are kind of wanting to go the way I want them to go. I have to kind of move around a little bit here. But we'll get them working. There we go. That's better. That looks a little better. Get the washer on there. And the nut. We will. I find that it's best to do these kind of projects after you've already put the sheet metal on. So that way you take the sheet metal back off because again, I have learned in my short staunt starting YouTube, you just gotta really, you know, just do the same thing five times and uh, make more content. So I'm gonna get this all tightened up for good and um, probably wrap things up. So back out we'll wrap things up and uh we'll go from there cable off i'll move that just a little bit better there it's not so holy. but you can see now all oliver gauges i'll replace this one next but for the time being it might sit like that how cool is that 
I'm also going to get a better toggle that's not some doofy red knob thing. So, yeah. Then I'm going to fix this too. Probably not this winter, but get that all fixed. But, yeah, we're just waiting on. Probably won't see much else out of this this week. Waiting on the parts for that. Everything else is pretty much all together on this tractor. So, we'll go from there. Again, like and subscribe. Thanks for checking out the channel. Um, you want to check out the podcast, search for Bibster Talks 2 on any uh, podcast service. You'll find the last ones we did back in April, we called the Quarantine Cast with Mr. and Mrs. Bibster. It's a lot of fun. There's some older, some really cool interviews on there when you kind of go back. And we're always looking to do some new stuff. So I've been talking to a few, uh, to a few people about that. So make sure to check that out. Get one last shot. I was like the front. Something about... The front end of these tractors, I always liked them. I always liked how they looked. Get on to those next. Bye.